crowdfunding for Goldilocks Pictures to support them on my patrons, including Science Steel Rail, Jack Foley, Courtney Bright, Thomas Van 3751 Brandon Bishop, and Azure Lore. Thank you all so much for your support. For any future updates and upcoming projects you would like to know about, support me on Patreon for bi-weekly blogs for any works in progress. That being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. <laughs> Or apples. Okay, if this episode is going to have some inadvertently potentially implicated innuendos in the dialogue, consider this a drinking game. Oh, Silver never gets enough hangovers. Hehehe. <laughs> It isn't too often that there are episodes that involve relationships. True, there is the married couple that is Katie's in shining armor, and there was the cliché of Spike's crush on Rarity. Of course, we can't forget the cringe fest that was Hearts and Who's Day, but that kind of makes my point. For several seasons, episodes had barely any conflict revolving around relationships, and mind you, that's not the concerning either. It's just something I felt the need to mention. The show has primarily been based on conflict with friends and various dilemmas the audience feels more connected to, but it's nice to have something different every once in a while. This is kind of how I feel with Hard to Say Anything. It's not a great episode by any means, but the more I watch it, the more I was able to take from it in terms of its morality. And as a nice touch, it's a conflict that involves Big Mac. He's not the central focus like the CMC are, but it's nice to see more development from him. Now, based on the fact that this episode revolves around trying to get into a relationship, some of you would probably think that I'd find this to be Hearts and Hughes Day done right. Actually, that's pretty unfair. While both these episodes are comparable with its plot and premise, they're both thematically different. Hearts and Hooves Day was about forcing a relationship against their free will, and the severe consequences behind it. Hard to Say Anything was about what it takes to win the heart of someone you have deep feelings for. Cliché to be sure, but I appreciate the different approaches of what the same formula is morally utilized. It's one of many reasons why I'm open to familiar stories instead of focusing on what's only original, or criticizing anything that's unoriginal. And even then, when they represent the same message, there's more than one way of learning of that said message. That's not even mentioning that this episode acknowledges the events of Hearts and Hooves Day. No love potions! Also, it's nice to get a callback character like Sugar Bro from the Cutie Map. I said in my review of that episode that I hope to see more of these four characters. Unfortunately, they have small roles. However, Sugar Bell has a bigger role, and by comparison, we visit the small town once again, but for a whole episode this time. So it's put to better use than just Starlight for the sake of her role of redemption that almost everyone and their dog is tired of. Does that town have a name, by the way? Most of the episode's journey comes to a rule of three. While formulated, it's still effective in its pacing to keep the viewers invested with what comes next. Not to mention, this one connects well thematically to what's best for Big Mac, as I elaborate each of them. They also encounter another pony who gets competitive to win Sugar Bell as it layers over the whole topic of this episode. These balls are like you. Take a shot. This is Featherbanks, a Justin Bieber pretty boy stallion who also wants Sugar Bell. And I have quite an experience with this character. The first time I saw him, I immediately hated his guts for the interference in trying to win Sugar Bell over. And based on who he's voiced by, I'm not too surprised. Nevertheless, this was very annoying to me because of how much I felt for Big Mac. However, that ideally was the point. It made the conflict more thematically legit. So to an extent, this episode does its job in making me hate him while testing my sympathy for Big Mac. Still annoying a feather to get in the way though. That supposed pretty boy who has his charm and has a better advantage. Excuse me? Fuck you, I'm prettier than him. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. God damn it, I'm trying to review an episode here. At least I'm smarter than him. In fact, he's so oblivious to those three mares who follow him around. Of all the mares that are in this small town, he focuses so heavily on Sugar Bell. But not once does he acknowledge those three mares that were read directly out of Disney's Beauty and the Beast. Those mares were gift rat for him. It also doesn't help that near the end, he asks the CMC on what to do with the trio. 
Uh, what should I say to them? Uh, you're asking us for advice? Mm-hmm. Look, I, I can main flip, write poetry, and juggle, but actually talking to a pony? Oh, it scares me almost as much as loneliness. Dude, you had no problem interacting with Sugar Bell. I'm a fucking introvert! Don't excuse yourself with that crap! Yeah, you honestly think I'm jealous of him now? I didn't think so. I like my hair better anyway. Going over these attempts, the first of which is a heroic rescue plan. While it is annoying for Featherbang to get in the way, it's not the best attempt to win the heart of someone you have feelings for. True, it would earn you respect, but that's something anyone would do. Plus, at any minute, someone could have blown Scootaloo's cover, and that would have really put Big Mac in a bad spot. The second attempt is having him dressed up as a prince outfit for- OH GOD! Seriously, down the whole goddamn bottle! Of all the attempts that they commit to, this one was by far the worst! Fuck, I'm glad Feather Banks stopped them on this one! Christ! The third attempt is when both Big Mac and Feather upstage each other in a singing competition until everything gets out of control. Upon mentioning this, I saw a polarizing reaction in what others had to say. Admittedly, it's cringe comedy, which I have stated in the past that I hate this type of humor. But this one, I was legit engaged and at times laughing my ass off. Both the two competing against each other with country and mainstream pop was such a hysterical cock contest to watch. Part of the reason why I never turned away was because everything started to happen naturally and not trying to make me turn away for the sake of embarrassment. Big Mac was rehearsing his song for Sugar Bell, as Apple Blue mentioned, but when Feather Banks interferes once more, it's a dramatic changing game where he now has to think of new lyrics on his own, all of which makes him more unprepared. As seen in the episode, Feather Banks is good at poetry, which gives him a better advantage in being a lyricist, but Big Mac never gives up. Thus, I rooted for him. Everything that happens in this sausage fest spirals out of control because of Feather Banks' expense. Sugar, sugar. <laughs> Hot like Take a shot! All of these attempts obviously backfire, as the singing competition was the final blow where Sugar Bell completely snaps at them. And with good reason too, since it costed her her display stand. Thus ending this whole competitive nature with a bang. Sweetie Belle was relying only on a fairy tale book, which is why the predicament came to be. And this is something that this episode does suffer from. It's kind of hard explaining this though, because it does deliver a line that hit me on a personal level. Seeing Sweetie Belle taking advice from a fairy tale book seems backwards when compared to her previous episode, Forever Philly. It also doesn't help that Big Mac was listening to these three kids the whole time. To be fair though, they did have progress in helping adult ponies, such as the beginning of the Faults and Our Cutie Marks. The only suggestion I would give is rather have this episode air before Forever Philly. It's the same effect with Bloom and Gloom and Appaloosa's Most Wanted. They really should have been switched around. So what is it that makes it difficult for me to talk about this? Well, I stated earlier that all these attempts are rightfully backfired. It's basically the episode being aware of what's going to happen. Now, being aware doesn't automatically make it good. It can sometimes make the episode very predictable, which to an extent it is. But looking back on all of this in hindsight, there was one line that struck me personally when the CMC and Big Mac were having a moment together. We don't get it. Big grand jesters always work in the fairy tales. But Sugar Bell's not a fairy tale princess. She's a real pony. This, to me, was a great delivery. The contrast between fantasy and reality can hit you really hard, but it needs to be addressed. What all these attempts have in common is the usual tricks of getting that someone you have feelings for. Heroic measures, a showing of talent, and an expression of love that is only fantasized, only to come off as sexual assault. These are common tropes and cliches that most viewers would assume as the way to get someone, but in retrospect, it's really complicated, but it's also simple at the same time. It's basically getting to know who that person is, what their interests are, or what you can do for them that can be helpful. And that's only very few out of so many other factors and variables that I would still have yet to understand. But the root of all this is showing what you're willing to do out of care and respect and overall just being yourself. Seeing that Big Mac takes this realization into account, he comes to identifying what's best for Sugar Bell. Earlier in the episode, she wanted a bigger display stand for her shop so that she can extend her business with other pastries. Considering that her other stand was damaged, Big Mac builds a new and even bigger one. Now I have twice as much room for all my desserts! <gasps> Which means I can make even more! I've been dying to try baking cream pies and whoopie pies and icebox cakes and of course, more apple treats. Wow, seductively mentioning four dishes in one sentence? Down the hatch! <laughs> that one was gift-wrapped. 
Obviously, Big Mac wins the heart of Sugar Bell, and his actions for her is rewarding as well as burning down all the other ships that fans have made over the years. May they well rest. Now, this isn't a guarantee all the time for who you have an interest in, because whatever piques the other's interest may not go as well. And that kind of fear can lead you into steering away from your honesty and committing to such desperate acts. This is also reflecting on what Featherbang said regarding his fear of interactions with others. Yeah, I still think that it's a bullshit excuse, but it further proves my point that your insecurities can get the best out of you too much. The formula of having someone trying to win the heart of who you have feelings for may be overdone, but it still holds some relevance today, especially for people who lack any good soul skills. That's why it's difficult for me to accept this as a flaw with Sweetie Belle's reliable methods off of a fairy tale book. We dwindle away from reality when the hopes that we imagine and experience that our lives can lead to a greater result. When I was a kid, I dwelled so much on fantasy. Being a movie star, having the imagination of talking with other fictional characters from the many franchises I loved watching. I imagined my life as a movie or a TV series and that whatever conflict I'm dealing with comes with a happier ending in the end. Fuck, to this day, I still do that to myself. And sure enough, so do many others in this day and age. People will do anything to break out of the bore of reality and get that piece of escapism. And yeah, I find it exciting instead of perceiving it as a normal life, but it's also delusional and at times unhealthy. I'm not saying that this episode is deep, nor am I excusing the fact that Sweetie Belle was dumbed down for the sake of plot convenience, but I was still capable of getting the impact. It's also why I enjoyed this episode a lot. It's not great, but I think it deserves a little bit more credibility than what it currently has. As is, it's one of the more disliked episodes from time to time, and I think it's a bit much. I've seen worse. Yeah, it's stupid, and it does go over the top, and the plot at times is contrived, but... As is, I had fun with it. It did its job with the plot, even if it was formulated, the humor is self-aware when it needs to be, and the message I thought was addressed well enough for younger viewers to understand. I may be in the minority here, but I think it's a good episode. So until next time, I'm Golden Fox and- Wait, did Featherbank just wink at the screen? Oh fuck, a thought just occurred to me. He got himself a harem! <coughs> fuck you! That was sheer dumb luck on his part, he- He just winked to show off. Yeah, screw you. I am not jealous. My hair and my looks are nothing like his. He's just a typical mainstream Justin Bieber show-off, which sucks on his part because Justin's music is garbage. Yeah, is it too late to say sorry? You bet your ass it's too late.